From the homes we wake up in, to the schools we take our children to, the hospitals we depend on, and the infrastructure that connects, transports us, and generates our power, the construction industry shapes our world. But for all its impact, the sector has long been beset with challenges, struggling to raise productivity, improve quality, operate more sustainably, or fully protect its workers. Now, the UK's government has teamed up with the industry to try and change construction. But after so many governments have attempted to hit the reset button before, and with several big industry reports already under our belt, is this time truly different? And will this plan actually work? We now need construction more than ever. We have to build in a more sustainable way that doesn't harm our planet. Many nations are facing a housing crisis. Changing social dynamics are impacting how we now use our cities. And many governments see big building programs as a way to bounce back from the pandemic. It's a context that's put construction's challenges under the microscope. The severe lack of people choosing to work in the sector, failure to embrace change and low productivity levels are now global problems. Like many countries, in the UK, the government is the largest construction client. They spend the most on buildings and infrastructure and have the power to influence how the industry works through the type of projects they commission and how they manage them. To try and improve the sector, the UK government has listened to the industry to understand where the big challenges are and then worked with it to develop the construction playbook a comprehensive, near 90-page plan that sets out how the government will approach construction projects going forward. Why is it so important to everybody that we get construction right? Listen, Fred, I don't need to tell you, construction is a huge part of the economy. It's for 120-odd billion pounds uh, part of the economy. It's a crucial part of the whole government's approach to rebuilding infrastructure and it plays a vital role in people's everyday lives. We take it very seriously in the government and we spend a lot of time thinking about how to improve, how to support uh, and how to develop the industry over the longer term. We decide that we're going to build things and those are things that tend to have a really, really long life and they're things that actually underpin the whole of our quality of life. They provide the way we get around every day. They provide the digital connectivity that we rely on. They provide the buildings that we're all inside. Anything and everything in terms of you know, how our everyday lives function essentially starts from some form of construction in terms of the built environment. What are some of the challenges at the moment? What is it that's made the playbook necessary? Uh, the, the biggest challenge is that effectively the whole business model doesn't work. It's as simple as that. It, it's a broken business model. The, the construction industry, the, the main contractors have positioned themselves into a place where they don't make any money. It's not a sustainable business model. I and mean, what you're describing there sounds, sounds pretty fundamentally a, a broken business model. How does the playbook try to address that? What are some of the key things in here that you think are gonna make a, a big difference? Government has been looking at the industry to resolve its own problems. Um, on, and on its own, it can't. There's not enough money in the industry to invest in productivity, in, in different forms of construction, in different ways to design things. So on its own, it can't resolve the problem. So the construction playbook starts to open up the opportunity to bring in some of the really good ideas that the industry's had for a long time. So we do produce some amazing structures and, and buildings. Um, but we can do it better. And, and the industry knows it can do it better, but it needs to be able to invest to help us get there. At the Playbook's core are three main priorities, improving safety and well-being, addressing building safety, particularly in the wake of the UK's Grenfell Tower disaster, and building back greener, helping to achieve a 68% cut in the UK's overall greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and a 100% cut by 2050. There's then 14 mandated policies that any projects developed by the UK's central government will have to follow, triggering a trickle-down effect into local authorities, the private sector and the supply chain. The ideas are not exactly radical or new and focus almost entirely on the front end, emphasising getting things right in the pre-construction process. 
The hope is that the changes these policies initiate will go on to help address many of the biggest issues. First, there will be a clear central pipeline of work published by the government, helping the industry to plan and prepare for projects way in advance. Government departments planning projects will have to assess the market early on, picking up on weaknesses or opportunities and seeing which emerging tech they could take advantage of. The government will also commit to longer-term projects in certain areas, giving the industry the certainty it needs to invest in new technologies. Building on that longer-term approach, the government's construction projects will be harmonised to choose from a standardised set of components, improving value for money and reducing long-term maintenance costs, while enabling construction to fully scale its emerging off-site manufacturing techniques. There'll be another push to use information modelling and standardised data, and early supply chain involvement will now be mandated. In one of the biggest shifts, departments will now need to focus on the outcomes they are trying to achieve with a new building or built asset, rather than the short-term scope of their construction projects. There's new rules on benchmarking to help with decision-making, a requirement to consider the best delivery model, and from there, a renewed emphasis on effective contracting. Moving into the procurement phase, where the government actually issues tenders for work, there'll be a fairer and more balanced approach to risk management, and new rules on payment and pricing, moves the government hope will make it a more attractive party to work with. Finally, the financial standing of critical suppliers will be assessed before contracts are awarded, and plans for the worst-case scenario drawn up in advance, helping to prevent the chaos that's caused when construction firms collapse. While pretty much all of this may feel like common sense, it's not the way construction currently works. And while things have been steadily getting better, our built world tends to get delivered through a laborious, expensive, inefficient and confrontational process. Though the challenge is a global one, many UK governments have grappled with the task of changing this vast and fragmented industry, drawn by a desire to build a greener society, grow the economy and get better value for their taxpayers. Just since 1994, a myriad of major reports, reset moments, new strategies and new governments have come and gone, each moving things forward a little, but ultimately failing to see their ideas connect on a widespread scale. Despite these interventions being welcomed and triggering some pioneers to emerge in some cutting-edge fields, much has remained the same. With another of these moments now upon us, I wanted to ask the UK government and the industry about this track record and understand what, if anything, will be different this time around. How is this going to be different? How, how, in what way can this avoid becoming another report that we aspired to but, but never really quite met? This is a much more practical tool to bring the industry together and to show that the government really understands its concerns and is trying to kind of foster a different environment, a bit of a step change, if you like, in, in the processes and the practices that uh, exist uh, across the UK. I think the other reason is because we have plans to do a tremendous amount of work in this area over the next few years. Uh, you know, we've got something like 30 to 40 billion pounds of contracts being let next year. We've got HS2, we've got finishing up Crossrails, a raft of big projects going on. And we want to be sure that everyone understands the scale of the ambition that we're trying to achieve and the possibilities to work together in a really, if you'll pardon the pun, constructive way over the next few years for the betterment of both sides. Um, I think this is going to be the most definitive report. I, I really wholeheartedly believe that. All the other reports are asking the industry to solve its problems. But actually it's buying behaviour which is the most pivotal difference. If you've got your buyers looking to change how they're buying, the industry responds to that. And, and that's the most exciting bit. We are at a moment in 2020 where we have obviously lived through enormous disruption and chaos and all sorts of change and so on. It feels like it's quite timely to have this available right now as we're trying to get through in terms of the, the COVID recovery stages and trying to make sure that we're investing in the right things. And there is no doubt that infrastructure generally in construction is going to be a part of that recovery plan. But I think the other thing that is, is coming through with significant urgency now and, and quite rightly it is the carbon and the climate change side of things because what this playbook does is it, it locks in 
that focus on climate change and action on carbon and in particular decarbonizing all of the infrastructure sectors as fast as possible. It does feel like the playbook has a pretty good run in terms of the potential to be successful there. While some of us may be weary of past experiences and sceptical about how the construction playbook may actually change things, its existence and championing by the UK's central government should of course be welcomed. Now published and available for free download in the UK and the rest of the world, the document sets a vision and could have a knock-on effect in other countries interested in its theories, helping change our world for the better. If you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.